Hello, my name is Pedro Romero, and I am a Director of State Government Affairs here in the East Region for Verizon. Uh, today, I'm honored to host a Verizon Community Partnership chat with a friend and community partner, Jennifer Rodriguez, President and CEO of the Greater Philadelphia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. The Greater Philadelphia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce is a leading business organization working to advance Hispanic-owned businesses and the community in the Greater Philadelphia area. At Verizon, we're proud to partner with the Hispanic Chamber and support its important work in the community. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us today. We're here to learn about the Chamber, uh, the important work that you do, uh, as well as programs and the impact you have in the Hispanic community in Philadelphia. Thank you so much for having me here. It's really my pleasure to be talking to you today. Jennifer, how would you best describe the Greater Philadelphia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce's mission with regard to being a community leader and helping the business community move forward together? The Hispanic Chamber was created 30 years ago as a nonprofit organization uh, with the goal of promoting, advocating, and supporting the growth and development of Hispanic owned businesses in the Philadelphia region. Uh, we do this through a number of uh, activities. So we do workshops, education, we do uh, some advocacy work, we build social capital and networks, access to capital uh, through about 20 events a year that bring around 3,000 attendees uh, on an annual basis. The Hispanic Chamber of Commerce certainly has a long, impressive history uh, as a business advocate and leader in Philadelphia. And you've been active on that uh, as uh, president and CEO. Uh, what is one area that you feel most proud of uh, in your organization for having had a positive impact in the community and in the city? So I'm particularly proud, particularly recently on an advocacy work. You know, it was not very long ago, a time in which, you know, government officials and city council used to enact legislation and programs without necessarily proactively reaching out to the Hispanic Chamber. Um, and over the last couple of years, we have worked really hard to really elevate and promote uh, Latinos as a, as a force, as, a, as an economic mm -hmm. development imperative in, in the city and the region. Um, and, and so we have, we are now an essential and key partner with government uh, and regulators, right? Uh, and we are particularly and specifically uh, the work that we did last year in launching or, or publishing our uh, Latino small business agenda uh, that really educates the community and the people at large, the public at large, uh, in relation to the needs, the aspirations, and the priorities uh, that the Hispanic Chamber has. Yeah, I think it's fantastic to have that representation. Uh, so one of the Hispanic uh, Chamber's initiatives is the Small Business Roadshow, which I think is an excellent example of your work in helping uh, business owners operate more successfully. Uh, what are the goals of that program? Uh, who does it reach? And what are the successful outcomes that you've seen? Yeah. So the Small Business Roadshow is actually a, uh, a a way in which the Hispanic Chamber outreaches uh, in our community. So we take it to different um, cities, different commercial quarters, different neighborhoods. Um, and what we do is we introduce what the Hispanic Chamber is to the community, but we also bring our partners and we really help the, the entrepreneurs in that community uh, have access to experts that can answer questions. Uh, what is really neat and really exciting about the program is that we do it in a very interactive way. So basically the audience, the, the entrepreneurs in the audience are asked or are invited to help the panelists really through a series of scenarios that they pull like almost like a, like a game show. Um, and, and there's the scenarios uh, of real life examples of what happens in the business and they collectively participate in solving those problems. So what happens is they learn about best practices, they learn to interact with uh, experts, and they also learn that really having that, that and being an entrepreneur and running a business is not a do-it-yourself project, that you really need best practices, you need a team of people behind you, uh, and it doesn't have to be costly or intimidating, especially when you have the Hispanic Chamber working with you. Yeah, coming from a family of uh, who operated small businesses many, many decades ago, uh, it would have been great to plug into that exact type of organization. Um, 
Jennifer, we're all working in rather challenging times due to COVID-19. Uh, how has the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce continued to offer programs to the community during this time? Well, like many other businesses, we have pivoted to a mostly remote environment since we can no longer really do the core of the work that we used to do in person. Uh, we technologically, we were very prepared to do that. That's something that did not, we didn't have a really difficult transition doing that. Uh, but uh, so we were very surprised and really incredibly glad that our community the business community has adopted technology in this way of doing video conferencing and and such a, to a such a high degree so that we can continue to be effective uh, what we knew because we have a very deep experience with economic development um, is that the government would take some time in order to develop the programs and the resources and deploy them into the community at large. Um, and that knowledge coupled with the fact and our close relationship with small business and small Latino businesses, we knew that these businesses tend to be small, tend to not have a lot of cash reserves and tend to be customer facing. And we knew that those businesses or our community would be disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. Um, so ultimately, uh, you know, we did a number of things and uh, created the strategy or the program that we're calling uh, the Recalibrate, Retool, Restart Initiative or R plus for short. Um, and that is the notion behind it is that we know that integrating or reintegrating into the new normal will take much more than just turning on the lights and that small businesses in our community will need a lot of assistance guidance and support and so the programs behind it and the the pillars behind it are meant to really uh, take latino owned businesses through the through the again recalibration retooling and restarting in the coronavirus post coronavirus yeah, and I, and I took a look at one of the programs that you offer with the Resolve It in 30 Seconds series. Uh, I think that's fantastic for people because it's something that they can view right on your website at their own pace and get critical information uh, that's pertinent to their business. Um, do you see your organization adding any new programs or services this fall uh, or in the coming year that are a direct result of COVID-19 uh, pandemic or perhaps the economic downturn or any other initiative? Sure. I think that one of the the we have pivoted and we have been pretty nimble and we expect to continue to have to meet new needs uh, or or recalibrate and some things that we're doing may not be working specifically well. Uh, so as a result, what we are doing this this uh, this fall and we expect that this will probably be a 24 month if not a little bit longer initiative uh, is that, well, number one, we have created the Resolve It in 30. This is uh, every other week. We have this coaching and technical assistance sessions that anybody can just jump in and get information on, you know, PPP loans and anything that's really of the moment. Um, we have also created the Dying Latino Takeout Weekend campaign. This is the first initiative that we executed back in April when the, the whole pandemic was very new to everybody. We knew restaurants would be suffering. And so what we're doing is we have this social media campaign with the hashtag Latino Takeout uh, that really promotes Latino owned restaurants and has them as an alternative to takeout, uh, reminding people that Latino restaurants are great and you should take out or delivery or use their delivery services. So Jennifer, if, if you could be the spokesperson for a public service announcement to give business owners and the community a message of hope and comfort through these difficult times, what would you say? Well, what I would say is that the Latino, the Latino community, and particularly the Latino business community, is known for being entrepreneurial, for being creative. I would say that we can collectively draw on our immigrant heritage, our immigrant past, to really dream and execute a better future for ourselves. Um, you know, it is a very courageous community. It's a community that has, uh, you know, we all of us has a, have a story in our family of of people that have really um, had to undergo really hardship in order to get where we are. So this is just another moment in history in which we're going to go through a tough period. But I am absolutely convinced that on the other end, um, we will be successful and we'll make it through. I love how you said dream and execute. I, I'm gonna definitely take that. Uh, well, Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and thank you for sharing your message and passion about serving the Hispanic business community in Philadelphia. Uh, we salute the important work you do 
uh, every day. And we wish the chamber continued success in helping to move the uh, Hispanic community forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a really my pleasure.